Hey everyone, welcome back to Framerated for another video. Today I want to dive into the Xbox Series X and kind of do something a little bit different here by breaking down one of the most powerful components inside the console and one of the most important, the GPU. We're going to look at how it stacks up, covering everything from compute units, clock speed, memory, and even how the ray tracing works. Plus, we'll see how it compares to similar PC GPUs. But before we begin, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. That way you can catch my random tech videos that I do whenever I please, because let's be honest, I don't have a schedule. And if you enjoyed this video at all, make sure to smash the like button. That way YouTube will actually show it to other people who enjoy it as well. I greatly appreciate your support. Now let's just dive right into it. At the heart of the Xbox Series X is a custom AMD RDNA 2 GPU. This GPU is specifically designed for gaming performance. It packs a whopping 52 compute units, aka CUs, running at 1.825 GHz. But what exactly are compute units? Well, think of them as like the muscles of the GPU. Each CU contains thousands of stream processors that are responsible for crunching numbers. Each CU contains many stream processors that are responsible for crunching numbers, handling complex game scenes, textures, and more. More CUs mean more parallel processing, which translates to smoother gameplay, better visuals, and faster performance. So with 52 CUs, the Xbox Series X has a serious advantage in terms of raw power, especially for a console on paper. But there's more to it, and that's things such as clock speed and how that affects performance. The GPU on the Xbox Series X runs a clock speed locked at 1.825 GHz, meaning it operates at that frequency no matter how demanding the game is. In contrast, the PS5 and many PC GPUs have a dynamic clock speed, which adjusts the speed based off of its load to preserve power, reduce heat, all of that fun stuff. But what does that mean for you? Well, a locked clock speed ensures consistent performance without fluctuations. It might not reach the highest peaks like some PC GPUs with overclocking, but you'll get stable performance across all games and developers have an expectation that they need to develop for as a result. And of course, we can't talk about the specs of the GPU and what it has available without diving into video memory, which is a critical component of the Xbox Series X and its GPU performance. The Series X is equipped with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. Now this memory is split into two pools. 10 gigabytes run at 560 gigabytes a second for graphical tasks, while the remaining six gigabytes runs at 336 gigabytes per second, handling system tasks and other non-graphics related processes. This setup ensures the GPU has the high speed memory to tap into for rendering those 4K visuals, large textures, and other demanding processes, all while maintaining a snappy system performance for background tasks and lesser demands from games. The bottom line is this memory setup is designed to give developers more freedom to push visuals without worrying about bottlenecks. However, it does require a little bit more optimization in order to get the faster chunk of the video memory to use as it's intended instead of having it kind of overflow into the slower system memory. And now finally, in terms of hardware features, the Series X is jam packed with many of them. But for PC comparison reasons, we're going to just focus on ray tracing as one of the many features the Series X has, as it's one of the most exciting and introduced this feature to console gaming for the first time in console history. Ray tracing allows for more realistic lighting, reflections, and shadows by simulating how light actually behaves in the real world. With the RDNA 2 architecture, the Series X can handle real-time ray tracing, something that was once limited to high-end gaming PCs. Ray tracing brings your games to life by adding depth and immersion, whether you're exploring a neon-lit city, a dense rainforest, or the lighting and reflections feel much more realistic. So what does that mean for you? Games on the Series X have the capability of having some parity with higher setting features on PC titles. Unfortunately, this technology was new and at a primitive level when the Series X was designed, and thus most hardware ray tracing acceleration done on the Series X caps performance and resolutions pretty heavily. We're seeing a lot of new games running at sub 1080p resolutions with pixely upscaling done by AI through FSR and most of the time operating at 30 frames per second. There are some occasions where they focus more on ray trace lighting and smaller ray traced effects to try to keep the 60 FPS but again, resolution takes a hit. So although the Series X and the PlayStation 5 are capable of ray tracing, they aren't the best at it, unfortunately, because of how new they were. And there are often a lot of cutbacks and compromises to make that work. So finally, how does the Xbox Series X GPU compare to a modern PC graphics card? 
Well, it's most closely aligned with the AMD Radeon RX 6700 XT in terms of raw performance. Both GPUs are built on the same RDNA 2 architecture from AMD and offer similar core features like ray tracing, though the RTX 6700 XT has slightly more raw ray tracing power due to its higher clock speeds and more flexible configuration. Ray tracing is also a heavy hitter on the CPU, which the Zen 2 cores inside the Series X are definitely starting to show their age a little bit with some games where Digital Foundry has stated CPU bottlenecks are starting to show their face a little bit here and ray tracing hits the CPU hard just like it hits the GPU hard of course hits the GPU the hardest however a bottleneck CPU isn't going to be helping with any of that which further improves your ray tracing performance on a 6700 XT in a PC with a high-end CPU. Now, in terms of pure teraflops, the Xbox Series X delivers around 12 teraflops, which is slightly less than the RX 6700 XT, but is close enough that most games wouldn't notice a huge difference during gameplay. So while high-end gaming PC might edge out the Xbox Series X in some cases, the value of performance you're getting in a $500 and currently $450 on sale at Best Buy is pretty remarkable, considering you can get 4K gaming, ray tracing capabilities, and play the latest games with respectable settings. So to sum it all up, the Xbox Series X GPU is a true powerhouse. It's 52 CUs, locked clock speed, 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, and the ability to handle real-time ray tracing. It delivers an impressive next-gen gaming experience for an affordable cost relative to a PC of a similar build. Especially when you compare its price to similar serious PC GPUs, it's clear the Series X does offer an incredible value even four years later today. But that's all I wanted to talk about in today's video of doing something new. I love talking tech. I love tech inside all things, computers or console hardware. I find it fascinating and I love breaking them down and comparing them. So if you enjoyed this video, remember to smash the like button again. Otherwise, YouTube will let me sit here in this corner of the internet all by my lonesome. And let me know in the comments what you think about the Xbox Series GPU or are you team PlayStation? Let me know down below. Anyway, guys, that's all I have for you. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.